All right, guys, how's it going? This is Mr. Zari here at Landrum Middle School in Spring Branch ISD. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at Robot C for VEX Robotics. Uh, we're going to figure out some of the basics of this program and uh, just get us started looking at the program and figuring out where everything is so that way we can start programming our robots and building our robots later. So, to get us started, uh, before we actually get started, actually, I want to say remember to always think things through and use your brain. It makes things a whole lot easier. All right. So first thing that we want to do is we want to find the icon or the shortcut for VEX Robotics uh, Robot C and I've put it here right in the center of my desktop. It looks just like this. It is the circle with the red C and it says 4.0. That is our shortcut. So we're going to double click that and open it up. And once it opens up, we've got the splash screen uh, for the startup. And then, of course, once that's done, uh, this is what it looks like every time you open it up. So this is our start page. And normally, whenever we're trying to program something, this start page, uh, when we're actually programming, will become a separate tab. OK, so we'll get a separate tab here. And that will actually be our programming window. So, once we get to this location, the first thing that we always are going to want to do is either figure out, do we already have a program that we started writing, or do we need to write a completely new program? So, in this case, I haven't written anything, so I've got to go to File, and I've got to go to Open Sample Program. Okay, and typically, this already starts in the VEX2 uh, folder, but I've shared with you guys through Google uh, Google Drive, I've shared with you the template that we're going to use, and I happen to save my template here on my desktop, and you can see that I've got two copies, Zare Robotics Template and Zare Robotics Template Backup. The reason why I sent you two is in case you mess one of them up and you overwrite it, you always have a backup, and you can open up the backup, save it over top of the robotics template that's not the backup and you're back to normal again. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my template and once I open it up you can see that I've created a separate tab it's got the name of my program which is called Zari Robotics Template.C because we're going to be writing it in C programming language and here's my programming window below that is going to be my debugging window or our compiling errors so that's what this bottom window down here is and then over here on the left hand side is going to be our language library or our text functions this is where we can drag and drop different programming uh, strings or lines of code into our program instead of typing them out now once you get more comfortable with this you're going to actually start typing them out because you can typically do it faster now, once we have a blank program open, the very next thing that we need to do is go to the robot menu up here in the top, and we're going to make sure that the VEX Cortex communication mode is USB only. Okay, VEXnet is an online, uh, basically, service in order to download programs, and we're not using that. We're just going to use the orange USB cables. We need to make sure that the compiler target is the physical robot. Okay, then we're going to go down to platform type and we want to make sure it's VEX 2.0 Cortex. Okay, so you can see that in this sub menu right here, it's VEX 2.0 Cortex. And we're going to use natural language PLTW. PLTW stands for Project Lead the Way, which is an organization that uh, creates a, a class that actually teaches this, but they have a good natural language library and so we're just going to continue to use that natural language library. So everything here is exactly the way it's supposed to be so now I'm ready to move forward. So let's take a look at the programming window so we can figure out what everything is. If you notice in the programming window every line of code is numbered all right, and if you look here, we see that it's got a slash and then an asterisk, and then it's got some information in green and then an asterisk slash. What this is is going to be anything in green and anything contained between line 2 and line 12 because of these icons, these symbols right here, is just going to be specifically notes. It does not run, it does not download to your cortex or anything like that. So if I wanted to make my project title, I would 
just simply type in my project title. If I want to make my team members, I type that in. If I want to put in the date, I type that in. Task description, again, type that in. And then pseudocode, which we'll talk about later, I would type that in. Now, obviously everything that I typed, which was just random information, is in green. Okay, that's one way to make things green, and green is considered notes. So the slash asterisk, asterisk slash, that's going to give us everything as notes. The other way to make notes is do slash slash. If you do a double slash, you're going to end up writing notes after those two slashes. So it says, remember to include notes for each line of code. Double slashes to give you notes. Your program begins after the open curly bracket. So I'm going to scroll down and you see on line 16, it says task main, which is in blue. Open parentheses, close parentheses. Line 17 is open curly bracket. So it's going to be extremely important all year long that you guys identify the difference between a curly bracket, which is this thing on line 17, and a parentheses. Okay, we'll talk about exactly what the difference between those is. So after line 17, if I wanted to actually write code, I would go to line 18, tab forward, okay, to where I would actually start writing my code. It's just an organizational tool to help us kind of create an outline and a hierarchy of our, our programming. And then I would write my code. And then at the very end of my program, it has to end with a close curly bracket. So if I have an open, I have to have a close. You can't have an open and not have a close. You can't have a close and not have an open. Your program will not work. And it'll show you down here in the compiling errors that you have some sort of issue with curly bracket. And the program will tell you that it's an unexpected uh, character and it's looking for an open curly bracket or closed curly bracket. Now, over here on the left hand side in our natural language library or our language library, we can go into each one of these sub menus, but typically most of our stuff is going to be here in the natural language library. And let's say, for example, I want to write a program to make my motor move forward and then stop or start the motor and stop the motor, I could just simply click and drag and drop that. Okay, I can also just simply start typing. Okay, so if I just write start motor, open parentheses, it would ask for the port, which is going to be on your cortex, and then it asks for the speed, and then we would close that with a close parentheses. Okay, so typically you're going to start off just simply by clicking, dragging, and dropping. And we'll talk about all these different things like motor port, what does start motor mean, what does speed mean, what does this, uh, this semicolon mean uh, whenever we actually start programming. I just want you guys to get familiar with what's here and what each window is. And so we've got some other things here in the menu. We've got wait, we've got until. Uh, and so all of these are going to be specific uh, lines of code that you guys are going to be using in order to make your robots function the way that they're supposed to function. Okay, now once you have done that, and let's say we have a program already built or already made, and we have a robot built. Okay, the next step that you would have to take is you'd need to go to motor and sensor setup. Okay, so that is located right here. We can also go to robot and we can go to motor and sensor setup. Okay. And what it does, we're going to skip the standard models because we're almost never going to use that. But for motors, we're going to have to figure out a name for each motor and we're going to have to name it. Uh, the typical naming convention is lowercase for the first word and uppercase first letter on the second word. That is a standard C programming language uh, formula that we use for naming things. And then we would also have to figure out what type of motor it is and your motors have the names on them whether it's a 269 or a 393. The 269 motors are the smaller ones, the 393 motors are the larger ones. Then we would have to figure out do we have any analog sensors okay and you'd have to name those and identify what type of sensor it is and then we have to figure out if we have digital sensors name those and determine what type of sensor those are. You're gonna figure that stuff out when we actually start making our programs for the individual options uh, that we have in our robotics kit. I just wanted you to see this because this has to happen 
before any of your lines of code will work because your lines of code are going to use the names that you've already given to your motors and your sensors. So once you do that, obviously the very next step is you'd want to save, and as a matter of fact, we probably should have done that first. We'd probably go to File, Save As, and I'm just going to name this Practice uh, simply because this is just practice. I didn't actually write anything. And I'm going to save it to the desktop, and I'm going to save that. So we can see that it's changed to Practice.C. Whenever I want to actually run the program, okay, there is a couple of different ways to do this. We can just click download a robot. All right. We can also click compile program, which will set the program and it'll check it to see if there's any issues. We could also go to robot and we could go compile and download. But if you take a look at this, it says function five, F5. So the fastest way for you to do this always is going to be just press F5 as soon as you're done with the program. It'll download to your Cortex. It'll also tell you whether or not you have any bugs in your program. And then it'll give you a screen. I can't get the screen right now because I'm not connected to a Cortex. Uh, but it would give you a screen that asks you to start, stop, pause. You can step into each line of the program. Uh, so we'll take a look at that later. All right. So at this point, what you really need to know is how to start off simply by selecting these items that we went through in the robot menu okay knowing that green are your notes your program does not start until after the open curly bracket and you can get your programming commands over here in the natural language library or the language library over here on the left hand side down here is going to be your debugging window and your compiling errors so that gives you kind of a rough overview of what this program looks like and how it's going to uh, function for you, where you're going to go for each individual thing. Uh, so the next video that you're going to end up looking at is going to actually be where you program something to happen with a robot. But of course, we have to build the robot first. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I want to remind you guys, make sure that you're always using your brain. Make sure that you always think things through and always do the right thing. All right. I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.